We give you glory, we give you the honor. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. With my hands lifted up, with my mouth full of praise, with my heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee. With my hands lifted up, oh, and my heart filled with praise. With a heart and faith, I will bless you, oh Lord. With my hands lifted up.
Remember, it's all in God's hand. Yes. It's all in God's hand. Yes. And all in God's hand. So, to His will. To His will. So, we thank God that we're here. And we thank God that He has appointed a special messenger for us tonight. Amen? Amen. A special messenger in the person of our dear brother, Reverend Dolan Garland. Pastors at the church of Blue Hills, one of the assistant pastors there, and we are so happy that he accepted the invitation to come and minister. So I invite everyone, and I want everyone to please stand as we welcome him. Oh, Jesus. Give me a chair, give me a chair. Because we need you, Heavenly Father. 
we need you, Heavenly Father. We know that there's no day that goes by that we do not need you. So we bring ourselves here before you, Heavenly Father, before your throne, O oh God, because we know that we can receive grace from you, Heavenly Father. So as we are here, may the words, Heavenly Father, of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my Redeemer and strength. Hallelujah. Scripture text was read that is from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. In that scripture text, it was talking about Lazarus. And this was the Lazarus that died and went into heaven. It was said that it was Abraham's bosom. It was that Lazarus. By the my scripture text that I have to share from you, the word that I'm sharing from you, is not that Lazarus, but it is the Lazarus that is from John chapter 11. This is the brother of Mary and Martha. This Lazarus is whom I'm going to share about tonight. You see, Lazarus was one that was raised in Bethany in a village that his sister, that his sisters ran. Lazarus was a sick man. He was sick. It was a day and time when illness fell on Lazarus. And we see here that Lazarus' sisters were Mary and Martha, and they sent word to Jesus. So we see in John chapter 11, verses 1, the passage is verses 1 through 44. And Lazarus became, was, was now a man named Lazarus was said. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet, and wiped his feet with her hair. We see here that Lazarus was sick. Lazarus and his sisters lived in this community. This community was named by their name. They, they, the people of this community knew the area in which they lived by Mary and Martha. They were someone of, I would say, a status within this community. And we see here that their brother Lazarus laid sick. He was not sick where he could have moved around. He didn't have a little flu or a little cold. But he was sick where he had to lay down. And we see that in verse 3 that the sisters sent word to Jesus. Saying that, Lord, the one that you love is sick. And we see, see here that when we look at this sickness, how the sickness was laid at lectures down and out. We can also see the familiarity of the sickness with sin. That, that, that sin comes into our lives and it affects our bodies. It affects our minds. It affects the way in which we carry ourselves. This sin that comes in, this, this, this was not the fault of our own, but this was something that we inherit. And this sin that comes in affects our bodies where we are down and out, where we are hopeless, where we are locked in captivity. The Bible reminds us that the wages of sin is death. So the sin leads to death. Just like how Lazarus laid out and, and he was no doubt that he died, but he was laid out at this time. The sin, the sin breaks us down. But the sin does not only breaks us down, it also breaks down our families. It destroys our families. It says that the enemy has come to, to steal, to kill, and destroy. He destroys the relationships with, with, between husband and wife, children and mothers, children and fathers. He destroys relationships. And he uses the sin 
that innate nature of man to bring forth those things. And then sin is destroying the man himself, the person, the person himself. And if it's destroying the family, it is no doubt destroying the community. So when the, when the, when the song says we need Jesus now more than ever, when we look about our communities, we can see the relation in which sin has played in the activities and those things that has been going haywire within our community. You see, we all know that it is a spiritual problem within our communities. But we have to realize that it's not only spiritual, but it is a sin problem. The Bible tells us that the, that the man's heart is, is set on wickedness. And man needs a new heart. What do I mean by a new heart? He needs a new life that he himself cannot provide. So we see Lazarus was laid out sick. And like I said, this sickness can be related to sin in the lives of humanity. So we see that his sisters did one thing that was good. That they called on Jesus. Yeah. Or as the word puts it, they sent word to Jesus. Because yeah. Jesus not too long ago left their town. And he was moving on to another town. Because while he was in that town, there was going to stone him because of what he had said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of that day. They were going to stone him. So Jesus was leaving that, that left Bethany and was in a, in a distant land. But Martha and Mary got together and sent word to Jesus. Yes. This right here reminds us of how important prayer is. Amen. How important prayer is. When we look out and we see the evil and the wickedness that is in the land, it reminds us of how important prayer is. Because it could have been worse if the saints did not pray. Yeah. If the saints did not ask God to divinely intervene in their communities, in their lives, in their families. So we see here that, that Mary and Martha called on Jesus. They said, Lord, the one that you love is sick. And I believe that Jesus understood what they meant when he said he was sick. That means he's near death. He was laying down. He was near death. He is sick. So there was an urgency of when they send this message. It says when Jesus heard them, Jesus gave them a word. I'm so happy for prayer because it gives us access to the throne of God where we can make our supplications, make our requests known unto him. It is inviting the divine into the natural. It is inviting Jesus into our situation. It is inviting our circumstances yeah. when we seek him through prayer. So yes, the theme says Jesus now. This word now that means can take on the meaning of being present right here. Present. And I know that the presence of the Lord is here. And where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty. And why there's liberty? Because the Spirit gives us that liberty. Hallelujah. So when we are in the presence of the Lord, guess what? We can make our, 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 our supplication. We can tell them what we, what we are going through. And the best part about it, He will answer. Just like how he sent word back to Mary and Martha. It says this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for 
God's glory so that the Son may be glorified through it. This Jesus told the messenger that this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that this God's Son may be glorified through it. It reminds me of the, of the passage in Daniel when the Lord gave a message to the angel to give to Daniel, but it was held up. We see here that this message was not held up. Because then he went back. And when we read Father Don, we will see that he went back to tell them, Mary and Martha. And that's another thing when prayer does. Prayer can take away the hindrance of the enemy or the blocking of the enemy from you receiving a word. That's what prayer can do. It opens up where you can open up your ears. Where, 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 where God can send that word and there be no hindrance. Amen. But Mary said, but Jesus said that no, it is for God's glory. Yes. You see, when the divine comes in, he brings his glory with him. Yes. When the divine one comes into our situation, he brings his glory with him. His glory in him cannot be separated. So when we say that we need Jesus now, and we invite the divine into our natural situations, guess what? He's bringing his glory with him. Yes. And his glory is not just to help us, but his glory is so that man may see yes. his son yes. and glorify him through this deliverance that will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. So yes, the sisters received word too from Jesus that hey, this sickness is not unto death. But as we read down, we see where in verse in verse 5, let's start with verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let's go back. It's kind of strange that the, that, that the scripture text that John puts it this way, that he loved Martha and and Mary and Lazarus. He loved them. And then it immediately jumps to say that he stayed where he was two more days. The situation was urgent. Lazarus was laying sick on the bed and Jesus decided to stay two more days where he was for someone that he loved. 